Well, hello and welcome to lesson four of the Fall Acrylic Portrait Painting Challenge. Building your painting layer upon layer. I'm so excited you're here again and I'm looking forward to teaching you the next step here in building your portrait with the glazing technique. In our last lesson, we finished up with just a few of the foundational colors. We were establishing the cool versus warm tones and we put down some ultramarine blue and some raw sienna, a little bit of Indian yellow, so basically just three colors. Uh, but in this lesson here today, we're going to spice it up a little bit. We're going to add some more color, uh, raw umber dark, which is one of my favorites, and more ultramarine blue, probably some more Indian yellow, and some raw sienna. And I think it's really going to come along. Oh, that's right, we did use titanium white in the, in the last lesson, I forgot about that, just to uh, lighten up the value in her shirt. But hey, I am excited you're here, and um, if you haven't signed up for the challenge, why don't you go ahead and do that now? It is a free challenge, you can uh, take this at your own pace, um, at your own leisure, anytime. Uh, currently, as I record this, uh, we have several people taking this challenge in our Facebook group, um, and they're just doing a fantastic job. In fact, I want to thank you for taking the challenge. I want to thank you for the effort you put in. It shows. Yeah, I mean, your, your portraits are looking amazing. Um, this next step here, putting in the initial glazes. I've seen your work in the Facebook group. Um, beautiful colors already. Good foundational values being laid out on the painting. And I want to commend you for that. Just let you know you're doing a great job. I'm proud of you and I look forward to teaching you and helping you take this painting all the way to the finish line. But if you'd like to sign up for the challenge, you can do that um, at realisticacrylic.com backslash fall dash acrylic dash portrait dash painting dash challenge. When you sign up, I'll send you the welcome kit and that includes the supplies list, the gridded reference photo you can paint along with us, the palette layout guide, um, all the masterclass lessons, and this whole class, the whole series of classes here, um, and this challenge itself is completely free. So why don't you go ahead and sign up today. I will send you the lessons and I'll be helping you along the way as you paint this portrait with us. So let me uh, dive in here uh, just with a quick word of prayer. Again, I wanna get started here on the right foot and I really need God's help to do this. Um, I can't do this without him. So I'm gonna pray right now, just ask a blessing. Father, I do ask a blessing on this class, and I pray in the name of Jesus that you would help me, Lord. Uh, you know that uh, the, the talent I have, it came from you. And Lord, all the talents that you've given the students that are watching this, it came from you as well. Lord, I pray you'd help me to communicate clearly how to paint these next few layers. Um, I pray that you would um, help the technology, everything to uh, come together here, the class would um, record properly. But Lord, I pray for each and every student that you would bless them. Lord, I pray you provide for them everything they need in terms of paint, brushes, and uh, all the supplies. I pray you provide the creativity. I pray you provide the persistence, Lord, that even if they hit a wall during the painting, they hit a uh, just an area where they don't like what they see and it's challenging and difficult, I pray that they wouldn't give up. But I pray they push past that and Lord, that they would become better artists for it. And then I ask, Father, that you would bless them and provide for them after the challenge is over. Um, take them into doing commission portrait painting. Take them into uh, painting portraits of their loved ones, Lord. Uh, take them into painting portraits that would just give them joy and pleasure and allow them to beautify the world. Lord, I pray you'd bless them, draw them close to you in Jesus' name, amen. All right, and we're gonna get started here. Um, you want to get your uh, brushes kind of laid out what you are going to use and uh, you're going to want to have a one inch flat or three quarter inch flat handy. Uh, you're going to want to also have a uh, half inch flat and you're going to want to have a uh, size four or size six round and that should work very very well for what we're doing here today. Now um, the colors we have laid out will be the same as what we had last time. Uh, raw Umber Dark, Burnt Sienna, Raw Sienna, Ultramarine Blue, Alizarin Crimson, uh, Indian Yellow, Titanium White. I do have Pyro Red Orange, 
ivory black, but that was from a different painting I was working on. Um, you shouldn't need that for this painting. And of course we have matte medium and the matte medium is how we build up the translucent glazing effects, which is the heart and soul of the technique that I teach. That'll allow you to build up depth, color saturation, um, smooth shading and transform your sketch with all the detail into a finished painting. Um, so here, what I'm going to do in this next step is I want to introduce some raw umber dark, some raw umber dark into the hair and the face. So let's take just a little bit of raw umber dark and we're going to mix that into the matte medium. Just again, keeping that fresh area of matte medium that has nothing mixed into it, keeping it clean and then mixing where we have a little dab wiped off in the palette and it really allows us to control the mixture. So you don't want to go back and dip into your uh, area again with the large amount of paint. You want to pull from this little dab that you just put down with the corner of your brush and that's going to make it a lot easier. And we're going to use this half inch flat that's going to give us a little more dexterity. And then we're going to basically just go on top of the hair and optically as we mix this raw umber dark. Now, if you don't have raw umber dark, if you just have raw umber, you can use that. You could mix a little bit of ivory black into it, but even just raw umber at this stage will work just fine. Um, but you can basically go on top of the ultramarine blue. And what's going to happen is optically those two colors are going to mix together and it's going to create a gray. Now eventually it, after you have enough layers on your canvas, um, you're going to end up with a nice rich black. But for now we're going to just end up with a gray. And again, in this technique, we want to slowly build up the painting. And it's kind of, again, like a Polaroid photograph. We're just fading it in from very light to very dark, very rich, very saturated. Um, and it does take some time to do that. Okay, so we're just going to go over all of these areas. And that would be over the little shadowed areas that you have from before. So you're going to go over those little patterns that you created in your sketch. And if you didn't create them in your sketch, it'll be a little harder to do this. You'll just have to try to see those patterns based off the reference photo. But hopefully you did that work in your sketch so that you don't have to try to figure out the proportions right now. See, the reason I, I like to do that in the sketching stage is so there you're only dealing with pencil and you can really block things in. Here you're trying to fight with, maybe not fight with, but you're, you're trying to master the technique of how to apply the glazes, how to mix the colors, how to hold your brush, you know, how much paint to have in your brush, how much pressure to use. And I don't want you to have to deal with all of that plus figuring out the proportions of where these individual patterns that show the locks of her hair would go. That's why it's so much easier to do that monochromatically in the sketching stage because then you don't have to deal with all that uh, stuff at once. You can deal with it separately. So, so hopefully you did that in the sketching stage. If not, you can still obviously paint with this. It's just going to be a little more challenging. Um, so now I basically just filled that in and optically it mixes together and it creates kind of a grayish color. Now let's, uh, let's work into using the same glaze. Using the same glaze, let's work into the shadows of her face now. And we're just going to take this raw umber dark. And again, raw umber would work too. Basically, I just brought that glaze in all the way down over the shadowed area. And I made sure to um, leave these edges very, very sharp because this area here on her um, upper back is 
backlit that's a highlighted area very strong contrast so I want to use just the chisel edge of the brush and get that sharp edge and then here I filled in this whole shaded area and like I say we worked up to the eyebrow area and we're just getting in the nasal bone and then underneath the wing of her nose there's a shadow that goes there I'm gonna glaze on top of this not only the nostril but this entire area so I'm, I'm not leaving that area below her nostril alone I'm actually glazing on top of that as well so I'm glazing on top of the pencil shadow and over what I left untouched by pencil hope that makes sense let me zoom in and show you what I'm talking about is this area right here this little this little shape right there right underneath her nostril see that I painted on top of that as well so this whole area all the way from the top of the nostril down to the shadow below I covered that with paint and I'm gonna get just this little corner as well using the tip of my brush holding it at a nice 45 degree angle we're just gonna get this little section right here and a little bit on the ball of her nose okay just a bit I'm also going to put a little bit of glaze let me load up my brush again a little bit of a glaze right underneath the nostril here if you look in the reference photo you'll see that has a shadow now your glaze should be very light and before you dive into the painting um, let me show you you want a light glaze like this you can see that okay so uh, again we should be going very light like 10% uh, paint 90% medium um, if you go very light it's going to really help you to learn this technique go even lighter than you think you should because you can always come back in and add more layers yes it'll take a little more time this uh, technique is not for the impatient it will take a little more time but it'll be worth it and so if you really take your time with this and put those glazes in very lightly very methodically it's just like the hare and the tortoise you know that you know that race you know what i'm talking about you know that the uh the hare went really fast right away and then he took a little nap but the tortoise just took his time and methodically you know just one little step at a time one little step at a time one little step at a time and eventually he won the race so just keep that little lesson in mind of the hare and the tortoise it's okay to just take these little baby steps and incrementally move your painting in the right direction you'll find it so much easier to uh, bounce back if you've made a mistake if you're using light glazes but if you're using heavy layers of paint and you put a brush stroke in the wrong place it can easily sap your confidence and cause you to second guess yourself it's not to say you couldn't overcome that but it's just more challenging I would rather not put you in a position where you would feel like you're wondering what's going on with your painting I would rather just slowly guide you to the finish line and I think you're gonna enjoy that so uh, let's continue here I want to see where else we can employ this wrong or dark well maybe just a little bit under her hair on the top yep just a little bit right there well, I want to use this as much as I can at this stage I think I got a little shadow under her lip area let's get a shadow on her lip itself right here and then just on the corner up there inside the middle a little bit and on the other corner and then let's add just a bit of a shadow right here on this side of her neck and a shadow underneath the feather I think I forgot to sketch that in so I'll have to put it in now shadow under the feather I think we have a shadow right there under the other feather and I'm going to put a little I'm using just the chisel edge of the brush a bit of a shadow on her um, upper shoulder chest area a cast shadow that's coming from her dress and it just basically is following the, the 
sketch that I put down, I, I drew a little shadow there in the sketch. I'm just going to dab it. It got a little dark, a little darker than I wanted it to be at this stage. I'm trying to keep all the values kind of at the same rate. And that's the, the process of doing this. I don't want to just darken the eyebrows really, really dark and make them stand out. I want everything to kind of come along at the same rate and it just make it look like it's a smoky painting, kind of faded, kind of light, and eventually everything all comes in together. The reason for that is if everything, you have one spot that's really dark and one that's light, it's hard for you to determine um, how your values relate to each other. But if everything's kind of light and airy and smoky looking, but it's all like that to the same degree, it's gonna be a lot easier to determine what to do next. Let's work on the background a little bit. Let's put in another layer of ultramarine blue. Just take a corner of ultramarine blue, dab it off with my brush, mix it in into the matte medium that I have here that's clear. And this is gonna be just a little bit more opaque. It's not opaque, but it's got a little more pigment than uh, the layer we did in the last lesson. You can see what it looks like on the white card. So here, instead of being 95% medium, 5% paint, it's probably more like 90% medium, 10% paint. But let's uh, just add this glaze over the area we did before. And we're just going to go over the entire thing. And you might say, well, Matt, why don't you just, uh, instead of doing you know 20 layers, why don't you do, do just a couple of layers that are more opaque? Well, the reason I do so many layers is you can get a much smoother look by having many, many layers and having the brush strokes go in several different directions. If you have just a couple of layers um, and it's, you know, only it's 50% opaque, 50% uh, matte medium, that's not the glazing technique. That might be doing a blocking in for your painting, an underpainting, but that's not the glazing technique. The glazing technique is where our layers are very, very translucent. And this allows you to really get a smooth, smooth application of paint. So I'm keeping that wet edge and I'm moving it all the way across. And again, I'm just going over the areas that I previously had with blue. What I'm just doing is getting it a little bit more saturated and smoothing it out at the same time. So add a little bit of a glaze right here. Uh, just around the tree area. That's good. Now, I want to add just the slightest bit of blue, although I think I might mix it with another color. And I want to add that to her clothing. So that's going to be our next step here. Yeah, let's, uh, let's do that. Let's add a little bit of... Um, ultramarine blue. I think I want to switch brushes. I think I want my half inch. Give me a little more dexterity and control. And let's add just a touch of alizarin crimson. So just a touch. And we're going to mix them together and just make this blue a bit more purplish. And I'm going to add just a tiny bit of raw umber dark. All right, so we want to get kind of a bluish, purplish gray. So I'm going to pull in a little more romber dark. A little more ultramarine blue. And let's look at the color on our white card. Again, kind of a purplish, bluish gray. And I hold it up to my reference photo and I say, yeah, that's that's in the ballpark. That's in the ballpark. I'm just holding it up there and I, I think it's in the neighborhood, so that's good. And we're just going to go over. I'm going to add just a bit more blue to it. 
show you on the white card, just a little more blue. But let's uh, let's add this in right here on her shoulder. And it's gonna be a little darker on this left side. I'm using long linear strokes. And let's just go over, yeah, let's go over the whole area. Okay, so use long linear strokes. So that way if it gets splotchy at all, it's gonna follow the texture of her clothing and it's not gonna stand out. I'm gonna add just a little bit of a shadow right here on this area by her armpit. Now I wanna add a little bit of a shadow on this area to the left of her chest. Just a little bit of a shadow. And I can see there's a delineation here. It's darker just in this corner, but it's lighter right there. There's a highlight right here, so I'm not painting this spot right there. I'm just painting this section right here, this section right here, going close to her armpit and then leaving that part alone. And then I'm gonna just do a slight shadow here on the right side by her, under her chest. All right, I think that's good. We, we don't wanna get it too dark. We just wanna start the process right there. And I think that's good for now. Maybe I'll just add the slightest little vertical shadow right here. And I'm gonna follow the contours of her clothing. Okay, don't go over the whole area. I'll leave this area on top alone. That way you'll have the uh, suggestion of the light shining on top of her chest. You'll have a highlight here, so don't glaze over the whole thing. We wanna develop not only the color, but the value. And I've said many times before, value is way, way more important than color. So just get the color in the neighborhood, get it close, but really pay attention to the way you sculpt the form with the strategic placement of shadows in the right areas. So leave this area on top alone, leave this area here alone. Just wanna have those glazes just where I put them there. Okay, so we're developing the form here coming together. We're looking back at it from a distance now and saying, what's next? And there's there's a couple different ways we could go, but uh, I think what I want to work on next and what will be most advantageous uh, will be to darken the background more. So let's, and when I say darken, we also want to saturate the colors. We want to get in some more of this tree coloring here. Um, and I think I might have to, I might have to pull out some phthalo blue. I don't think we're going to achieve this color with just ultramarine blue and Indian yellow. Um, so let's pull out just a little bit of phthalo blue. And phthalo blue, you can just set that on your palette between the ultramarine blue and raw sienna. That's a good place for it. And you don't need much. Just a little dab, that's all you need. Very, very strong pigment. Now, let's use the large brush, this one inch or three quarter inch flat. Rinse it off really well, wipe it on a rag, get that excess water out. We don't wanna have any dripping water on there. Let's put down some fresh matte medium because most of the matte medium by this point's probably been mixed into. Unless you have a clean area of matte medium, otherwise I'd put down a fresh dollop of it. And let's take just a bit of raw sienna. I'm sorry, not raw sienna, Indian yellow. A little bit of Indian yellow. All right, we're just gonna mix that in here. I dabbed off some on the corner. Now we have this Indian yellow here and just a little bit of phthalo blue. 
and I just dabbed it off in the corner here as well. You can see that there. Now let's pull that mixture into the yellow. We just want to basically shift the color a little bit, just a little bit to the greenish side. Let's test that on the white card, see what we have. We want just a nice kind of yellow green color. How about that? Can you see that? Just a nice yellow green color, very, very light. And let's just introduce that into the background. Now, this is very, very easy to overdo this color. Um, so uh, I'd like to encourage you to not go too, too bold with it. Make sure this glaze is very, very light. Okay, the phthalo blue is a very, very strong pigment. So use just the tiniest amount, tiniest amount. I want you to make sure that your mixture is, oh, probably 70% um, Indian yellow. And I'm just talking, just talking about the mixture of paint at this point. 70% Indian yellow, 30% phthalo blue, maybe even less. Let's say let's say 85% Indian yellow, 15% phthalo blue, just the tiniest amount of phthalo blue, okay? And then you want to dilute that again with matte medium to a ratio of 90% matte medium, 10% paint. So I can't stress this enough, how light you want to go with this. I don't want you to get afraid to put down the glaze. I, what I just would like to avoid having happen is you know, people putting down this glaze and then saying, oh, you know, you, you have lime Kool-Aid all over your painting. I, I don't want to see that happen. Um, so grab yourself a white card first, okay? Seriously, take a piece of white computer paper or white card stock and test your glaze first on this before you apply it to your canvas. Make sure that the glaze that you see looks like what I have right here, very, very, very light. I know the light's kind of shining on it. You can't see the color, but very, very light. And when you get that on your white card, then you're safe to apply it to your canvas. It is necessary to apply it though, because otherwise I don't think you're gonna really have that kind of vivid look of the green in the background. Now, if you're not you know, concerned about getting that Kind of vivid look of the trees in the background it's not a huge deal but you know if you want to follow uh the way we're painting this here and get that richness in the the background trees this glaze will be necessary for that um, but this we can just let that let that dry and now we can come back in actually i tell you what I, when i look at the reference photo i see just a little hint of that yellowish coloring in the background. I'm going to take this color and I'm going to just mix a little bit of raw umber dark into the same glaze, okay? Let's just take a little of this raw umber dark, mix it into the glaze. And then let's, so now we have a kind of a dirty yellowish green, but now let's add that just into the background. In a few key spots, we'll just have a few areas where it looks like some of that tree coloring is in there, especially just in the foreground. Don't do it to the background. That should be very, very uh, blue because uh, by putting the blue in the background, the colors will recede and we're actually seeing the atmosphere in front of it. So it's appropriate to have the background hills very blue. But to have these hills in the foreground just a little bit uh, greenish. So I'm adding just some of this coloring, but again, mixed with a little bit of raw umber dark so it's not quite so intense, and just adding it to a couple of key spots. So just right up in here. Kind of in this area here is good, a little bit right in here, and a little at the top, but I'm gonna leave that area up there more or less blue. Yeah, and I think that'll be good. That's just uh, 
helps to kind of integrate the colors a little bit more. All right, let's mix a uh, let's mix a glaze to go over her hair. Uh, we're going to take a little bit of romber dark and alizarin crimson, and just uh, mix into some matte medium. And I just want to get that slight bit of warmth on the highlighted part of the top of her hair. You want it to be really light again, very translucent. All the glazes at this stage should still be like 90% medium, 10% paint. And to show you on the white card, that's what we're looking for, something very light. And you can paint this not, over, not only just over the highlight, but over everything, all of her hair, all the way down to her scalp or skin line just paint over everything but because we're painting over everything the previous layers did their foundational work and so now these areas on top should still be lighter in value so we're just going to go over the whole thing all right excellent Let's get a little bit of the coloring of her feathers. Just because we have something kind of close on the palette right now, let's do that. And let's, uh, let's just take a Lizarin Crimson. Yep, a Lizarin Crimson, matte medium. So basically just straight a Lizarin Crimson and we'll, um, Thin it out with a lot of matte medium. And then we're going to place that just on top of the feathers. Just like this. I think a portion of the feathers are a different color though. Yeah, I think the tip of this feather, uh, this feather right here on the top is kind of yellowish on the bottom. So I'm not going to paint all the way to the bottom. I'm just going to Put that purple on the top and put this, well, it's a magenta, not a purple. And put this magenta yeah, there and I'm going to leave off on the bottom of that feather too. Again, it's kind of got the different coloring on the bottom. Okay. That's good. All right. And now... Her face should be dry. I should be able to add another layer to her face. And yeah, as I study this, I think we can take just a little bit of burnt sienna. That's a strong pigment, but take burnt sienna, mix it in with a little bit of the alizarin crimson you just mixed. Add some more matte medium to it. And we're going to just develop a little bit of, a um, little bit of shading on her face and get some warmth in a few areas. Again, it should be very light. Here, here's what we have on the white card. Very, very light. And let's just come in. I have to make sure this is dry. That's the only thing. All right, while that uh, area is drying, um, I'm going to add just a little bit of a glaze right here on this uh, area of whatever this shadow is below the wood, or I'm not sure what that is in the background. Just add a little bit of a shadow there with. Um, raw umber dark and we're just gonna strategically place it in a few different spots using a flat edge half inch flat and let's bring a little of that raw umber dark even into the tree and again raw umber would work as well Get a little bit of warmth in there just suggest kind of some branches and stuff poking up into the tree
little bit of a shadow underneath this area here. The uh, raw umber dark and the ultramarine blue will work well for that. Okay, with that now I think the skin tones, that initial glaze should be dry. I'm going to, I'm going to add just a little bit of a, a shadow all over the face actually. We're going to bridge the gap between the darkest shadows and the highlights. So let's do the mid-tones here. Again, alizarin crimson, a little bit of burnt sienna. And let's work basically out of the shadow here on the left side. I'm going to zoom in just a bit. Work. We're going to paint on top of the existing shadow. Okay, we're going to go over that whole area and then we're going to exceed it by just a bit. And we're going to bring this into the areas that are lighter. So out of your pencil area that's shaded in, I want you to go on top of that, but then exceed it and go into the lighter areas. And with that, we're going to develop a little bit of shading. We're going to go right here on this area by her forehead. Develop a little shading there. A little bit of shading coming out of the nasal bone area. And then a bit of a shadow here just to the left of her eye socket so it's coming down from her eyebrow area. We can paint right on top of the eye, no big deal. Don't be afraid of doing that because we're going to still do a lot of work on top of the eye later on and we can fix any of those mistakes. So just go right into the white of the eye with this glaze. Not all the way to the right side, but the left side is okay. You know, just to develop the, the shading, it's worth doing that. Really try to smooth it out. You don't want to overbrush it. That's easy to do. Um, let's get a little shading on this right hand side as well. You can see just a little bit there where it's darker. Now I'm going to, I used horizontal strokes and I'm going to use vertical strokes to smooth it out. You can just dab the end with your finger, get the edges a little bit smoother that way. Um, we're going to put a little bit of a shadow right here, but we're going to leave this area in the middle light and start to develop some of that shading already. We're going to add a glaze on the right hand side. So again, this is using your half inch flat. Now we're going to follow the contours of her face. See how I'm turning my brush? I have it going this way, this way. And now I'm tilting it, tilting it, tilting it. Just imagine it's radiating out from her eyes like sun rays. That's the angle your brush should be, but you can follow up with another stroke going in the opposite direction if you need to, to smooth it out. If you use, if you make this glaze really light, it should be pretty smooth and you don't want to overbrush it. And it's okay if it has a harsh edge, we can soften that later. Add a little bit of a glaze right here. I'm going to add a little bit onto her nose. Just the ball of her nose, that kind of has a warmer spot. A little bit to the right. And now let's work down uh, into her neck and chest area. So let's go all the way on this shadow here on her neck, cover over everything, and then work out of that shadow into the mid-tones. 
So now this area between her carotid arteries, we're going to develop that. I'm going to leave off in the middle and just suggest that artery there. But I'm really going to add this richness of this glaze in these two points right there. I'm going to add just a little bit of that glaze just underneath her chin on the right hand side. I'm going to develop a little bit of shading coming out of this edge just using short choppy strokes like this. And I'm going to get this shadow going all the way up into this edge right there. And this is that shadow that goes into the upper back and there's a highlight there, they meet together. And we have two different light sources being juxtaposed on top of each other in this section. But I'm going to really go right up to the edge and keep a really harsh line. Then I'm going to blend out of it into this section right here. This is a beautiful section right here that really sculpts the form of her collarbone. So we don't want to miss that opportunity to develop that shading. And then let's go just to the other side of the collarbone here. And let's work out of that shadow that we delineated with the sketch and go past it just a bit. We still see the sketch shading from the colored pencil underneath and that's okay. That gives us almost another level of shading at this point. Now let's add a little bit of a shadow just to the left of this feathered necklace. And this is showing just a slight bit of contours on her chest, her sternum area just above her breast area. So we're just adding that slight bit of contour there. And we're going to bring this shadow, this glaze all the way across, all the way across up to the edge of her clothing. We're going to not paint over the feather. Now right here we have to be careful. There's a shadow um, that shows the delineation here between that highlighted area from the backlight and then the lighting in the front. And we're kind of sculpting her shoulder right here. So don't miss this interesting form. It's kind of a rectangular form right here. You really want to get that edge in. So right here, just showing that shoulder. And then here it can kind of fade out. There's a bit of a shadow to the left of this feather. I think it's being cast by the feather. And we're leaving that off. So now we're already be beginning to sculpt the form here just with this. But um, we want to get this area down here in the lower left. So I'm just going to add a little bit of that same glaze right here. Now I'm going to dip my brush in some matte medium and dilute it. This is called a dilution blending technique and that will fan that glaze out at a lighter translucency and really develop some shading going into the rest of her chest area. Yeah, I'm gonna just bring this glaze and I'm gonna use what's on my brush. I'm not dipping it into the palette again. Let's just get this form identified right here. A little bit of this form just this shadow on her shoulder area. All right, as I look at this here, I, I just notice I'd like to add one more glaze to the background before I call this lesson done. I want a little more contrast between the form of her clothing, you know, her shoulder, her chest. Um, want it to stand out more against the background at this point in the lesson. So. Let's add a glaze to the background and then we'll call it done. I'm sure you spray your palette to keep those paints nice and moist. It makes a huge difference. You don't want your paints drying on you. That's uh, going to be very costly and it's very frustrating to work with tacky paint. So invest in a nice Flarisol sprayer like this and that'll really do wonders for you. You can get them on Amazon. I'm not an affiliate, but I think you should buy one. I think you'll really appreciate it. And uh, all right, let's take the one inch flat. 
put a little more matte medium on the palette and we want to create kind of a, a color that's similar to what we put down for her shirt but let's get a little bit of uh raw umber dark the alizarin crimson we had from before and then just a bit of ultramarine blue just a bit of ultramarine blue and we're creating kind of a mauve gray almost this is what we got on the white card and let's apply that to the background and a few strategic areas i'm going to switch brushes i think this one inch flat actually will be too much so we'll go with the half inch and i'm going to first of all start with this left hand side just put a glaze right on top of that other layer Yep, just right here, just to blend out of that shadowed spot into the highlight. Yeah, I think this could get a little bit darker. Let's just wipe that away. I'm having trouble seeing it. Let's try this. So I actually can see what I did. Put a little glaze right there. We want to go over everything, not just the highlight, but go over everything. That way, not only are you getting that transitional blending, you're darkening the dark areas at the same time. All right, now let's uh, work just a little bit of this glaze into the background and cut up along the edge of her shirt. Along the edge of her shirt. And try to really pay attention to those forms. Now I'm following the sketch areas that I delineated. There is a little shadow right here. I'm going on top of that. There's a little bit of a shadow that follows along. Oh, there's a bit of a break there. So I'm just making a bit of a break. And the angles trend upward a little bit. They're not exactly horizontal. So make sure that you follow the angles in the photo. They're more like this. They're not straight with the grid lines. They're up at a slight, slight angle. Okay, and then there's a kind of a lighter area here. There's a little bit of a divot there. And then we have a shadow or just an area with a darker value right here. And we want to follow that, fill that in. Again, cut up to the very edge of her dress. Don't be afraid to go over the line, but try to cut up right along the edge as close as you can. All right, and here's where we're at for this particular stage of the painting. And it's just been a pleasure to be able to teach you this far. Um, we've got the painting well along now. It's still in the very initial foundation stages, but we've had an opportunity to develop some shading in her face, um, get some more sculpting in the light forms of her hair, um, get the background a little more saturated and develop distinction between the hills in the front and the hills in the back. Um, we also put down a layer and a glaze on her shirt and clothing to develop some of the forms uh, with the highlighted areas and areas in shadow and just developing the three-dimensionality in her form. Um, we also um, had an opportunity to uh, differentiate between her figure and the background um, and some other things as well. So. Uh, this is good. We're at a very good point here in the painting and uh, I really look forward to seeing your work in this. So be sure to reach out to me. Leave a comment below in this video. Let me know how you like the lesson. Let me know how your painting is coming along. And of course in our Facebook group when you sign up for the challenge you'll get access to that. 
um, and you can post your painting in the group, get immediate feedback and encouragement. Um, you can join our classes at Realistic Acrylic Portrait School, the membership there, the all access membership where you'll have an opportunity uh, to get continued feedback, critiques, access to lessons, um, and a lot more ways to help you along in this process. Well, hey, I'm so excited that you took this lesson so far. I look forward to teaching you in the future. Um, subscribe to this channel for more videos like this. Give this video a thumbs up. That'll allow other people to see it more on the channel. Share this video with your friends. Share the challenge with your friends. And I'm sure they would appreciate that and they'd be able to paint along with you. And you guys can encourage each other together in your portrait painting. Well, I look forward to getting the next lesson out to you and seeing your painting develop. So don't be a stranger, reach out to me, let me know if you have any questions, let me know how I can help. Again, thank you so much for watching this video. Thank you for taking the challenge. God bless, I'll see you in the next lesson.